Cheating in poker is as old as the game itself. Cash games and tournaments have become bigger and better with huge amounts of money to be won. Such conditions create a perfect hunting ground for scammers and cheaters. Not all players try to win money in a fair game. Some of them discovered pretty successful ways to scam poker players. I have already made videos in the past where I covered 17 different poker scams, so make sure to check them out in the description. So moving on, here are 9 more poker scams that rocked the poker industry. Number 1. In 2018, police got called to the Alia Casino in Glasgow by several angry poker players who accused an individual by the moniker Billy the Egyptian of using a tiny camera to read an electronically marked deck of cards. The Egyptian, a known player, was in cahoots with a croupier scamming other players at his table. For this scheme to work, the croupier needs to place the deck on the table on its own for a short period of time. The precise details of the scam are unknown, but one possibility involving collusion of the croupier and a player is a deck of electronically marked cards which sends signals to a tiny mobile phone camera. It then sends a signal to the second mobile device which feeds an earpiece. The device can tell which cards are at the top of the deck when it's placed on the table. They can also predict which one of the players at the table will have the strongest hands based on the information transmitted. However, no arrests were made in this case. If this story sounds somewhat familiar, that's because it resembles the more recent Mike Postle cheating scandal. Mike Postle was accused of having access to players' whole card information by somehow exploiting the RFID technology in the cards used to stream the game in real time. Number 2. In 2019, high stakes pro Peter Jepsen was found guilty of cheating at online poker by a Copenhagen city court. A well known high stakes online player with success predating Black Friday received more than two years behind bars and a 3.5 million euro fine for a six year cheating spree that involved Jepsen installing malware on other players' computers. From 2008 to 2014, Jepsen would run the scam against other high-stakes regulars, usually at high-profile European poker tour stops. He would gain access to their laptops and install the software. Once installed, he would have access to their whole cards. After complaints from several players, the Danish authorities launched a five-year investigation and trial. During the trial, there were three witnesses that testified that they were involved in the scam. The two men and a woman that testified admitted that they were involved in installing the software that Peter Jepsen used. Along with the jail time and a seven-figure fine, the government confiscated almost $3.9 million from Jepsen, roughly the amount that he won from his opponents using an unfair advantage. At one point, he also held a record for the biggest online poker part 1 after taking $499,000 from Tom Duan during a 501k No Limit Hold'em session back in 2008. Victor Blom aka Isildur1 was among other victims who apparently faced Jepsen during the years he was suspected of running his Trojan plan. Number 3. Playing under the alias Douchecom, Darren Woods perpetrated an online poker scheme from 2007 to 2012 where he would use a VPN service to create multiple accounts on gambling sites and manipulate them. Darren Woods used his status in the poker community to his advantage. He was first exposed in September of 2011 by Farewell, a fellow 2 plus 2 player who was contacted by Darren, an 888 sponsored player and given a rake back deal. Woods was also regarded as a skilled poker player who mostly competes in high stakes, fixed limit hold'em games. He was good enough to supply tutorial videos to many poker sites. When Farewell viewed one of Woods' training videos and discovered that he was Woods' opponent in the lesson, he became skeptical of him. When searching up the game's records online, it was discovered that Woods had used a different screen name during that session than his normal one, which is a significant red flag because players are only permitted to have only one account. Darren Woods initially denied 13 charges of fraud committed between January of 2007 and 2012, but later changed his plea to guilty on 9 of those charges. Darren Woods was found guilty of essentially rigging online poker games by using a number of different identities in order to play on several accounts at once. 
He had set up computers in such a way so as to disguise their location from the poker rooms, making it look like all of the accounts were completely different people. Woods got charged with 13 counts of fraud and got sentenced to 15 months with the caveat that if he did not pay 1 million euros in restitution, he would get another 6 years added to his sentence. Number 4. It's hard to overlook Men Win's accomplishments as a tournament poker player, but it's equally as hard to overlook the numerous cheating acquisitions that followed Men the Master wherever he went. Once you dig below the surface of Men's accomplishments, you end up uncovering some pretty nasty and damning evidence of foul play precisely how much it is to be believed is open to discussion. If he wasn't slow rolling people at the 2008 World Poker Open, then he is being verbally abusive to the dealers at the table. Daniel Legrano had openly called men a cheater and Justin Bonamo had made even stronger claims. According to Justin Bonamo in the early 2000s, at the Commerce Casino in LA, men and a few of his horses were in their hotel room when the fire alarm went off. When the casino investigated the fire, they found tournament chips in the room. Part of the cheating allegations, particularly the team play allegations, stem from men's huge stable of Vietnamese horses. In addition to being a top-notch poker pro himself, men also mentored and staked just about every young Vietnamese poker player in the 1990s and 2000s. And this dynamic not only leads itself to the temptations of collusive play, but also raises alarms in other people's minds whether cheating is happening or not. One of the allegations leveled against Men Win in the past is that he would set up certain rules that his backed up players must follow in a cash game. One of those rules was that if a staked player and men were involved in a hand together, then the staked player must fold if men raises him no matter what the player has in his hand, even if it's the absolute nuts. Despite the allegations as well as being one of the most hated people in poker, Men Wen was still inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame and is still welcome in card rooms across the world. Number 5. Brad Booth was one of the top online poker players during the poker boom and considered one of the most fearless poker players in the mid-2000s. However, in 2012, he was caught in a poker scandal that involved Duck Polk. According to a post made by Duck Polk in 2 plus 2 forum, Brad Booth was looking to get back into online poker and needed a transfer at Lock Poker. A friend of Polk's said Booth had been playing at the win and had at least $50,000 on him. Duck Polk first sent Brad $13,000 which he received in cash the next day from Booth, but from then on, things got very wrong. Brad then inquired as to whether he might obtain a larger amount from Doug. With the initial transfer going well, it appeared to be a safer bet. Brad requested $30,000, which Doug Polk sent him online. Several days later, when they met up to reach an agreement on when to transfer the money, Brad told Doug that he had a lot of debts and was out of cash at the moment. Doug assured Brad that they could work things out if he kept in touch and made small payments over time. Brad agreed and sent $2,200 to Doug the next week. However, after the first payment, Brad Booth changed his phone number and left the country and started to completely ignore Doug. Brad Booth has been through the ringer in his poker career, but he also built up a very suspect reputation among his peers, a reputation it seems to many people are still unaware of. Booth was the man during the poker boom regularly playing in the highest stakes games online at Ultimate Bet Poker, which may have made him one of the prime targets of the site's super users who fleeced Booth for somewhere between a few hundred thousand to a few million dollars depending on who you ask. After this, Brad's game was in shambles and he took to borrowing money, shooting most of it playing online poker. After being mocked on 2 plus 2 and on every other poker community, Brad decided to defuse the situation by releasing a YouTube video in which he admitted to owing Polk money and acknowledged that his previous behavior had been disgusting. According to the video, Brad had been backed for $100,000 in WSOP tournaments and had promised to reimburse Polk and the other persons he owes money to 75% of his winnings. Booth was virtually silent and disappeared for the greater part of a decade after losing so much money and accruing debts. Brad was reported missing last year, claiming to have gone on a camping trip. Finally, in September of last year, his family informed the poker world that he was still alive and well. Brad Booth's story is heartbreaking and it exemplifies how brutal poker can be when played recklessly. Number 6. 
In May of 2020, Bill Perkins teased an alleged poker cheating scandal that would make Mike Postle's scandal look like a church service. The hedge fund manager offered basic details of the incident after leaving everyone on Twitter waiting overnight. Bill Perkins stated that he competed against recreational players in a private home game using a poker app or so he believed. He added in his cryptic statement that he caught anonymous pros using recreational player accounts but that he wasn't ready to reveal the identities. Dan Bilzerian named Daniel Cates as the perpetrator on Twitter the next day but then deleted the tweet. Despite the fact that most poker enthusiasts on social media chastised Perkins for exaggerating the incident, Jungleman was also criticized by numerous professionals. Daniel Cates later released a statement where he admitted to playing under the account of an unknown player, Sina Talib. Cates claimed he played very few hands against Perkins in the game. He apologized for Bill Perkins getting caught in the crossfire of multiple pros ghosting recreational players. Cates also said that he doesn't think it's fair that he was being singled out since others did the same thing. In his statement, Cates wrote that he holds himself to a high standard of ethics but says he sometimes makes mistakes and apologizes for his actions. This is not the first time Cates has been accused of playing on someone else's account. In 2011, it was learned that Daniel Cates, along with Hasib Qureshi, helped Jose Macedo win a sponsorship prize from Lock Poker. Cates admitted to using Jose's account to win money for a Lock Poker challenge, including winning $43,000 from US pro Tyler Smith, who had clearly stated that he had no interest in playing Cates. Check the link in the description for the detailed video of the Jira poker scam. Number 7. Italian poker pro Sorrel Mitzi first became embroiled with the long arm of poker law in 2007 when he received a life ban from the then poker giants Full Tilt Poker when he took over the account of a friend and their tag teaming, which is against the rules, saw them win an amazing double of the Full Tilt Poker 1 million guaranteed tournament and the next weekend, the Poker Star Sunday 1 million guaranteed event where Mitzi had negotiated a share of the winnings. However, they were not successful and eventually got nothing as the entire winnings on Full Tilt Poker was confiscated then redistributed. Sorrel Mitzi received a life ban from Full Tilt as a result of this breach. Then in 2008, he was discovered to be multi-accounting and once again drew the wrath of the poker community. He was accused of letting a friend use his account when he said he had to leave for a flight and was deep in a tournament. He was banned by PokerStars for 3 months due to this. Less than two months after being named Bluff Magazine's Player of the Year in 2010, Sorrel Mitzi was at the center of a cheating dispute between himself and 2010 WSOP main event runner-up John Raisner. Sean Deeb in a 2 plus 2 post said that Mitzi cheated Raisner out of several thousand dollars at the PCA. It was Sorrel Mitzi who urged Raisner to play Chinese poker with him. He also incorporated several modifications such as use of a joker and a point system. What really matters though is the way Sorrel Mitzi shuffled the cards. Raisner noticed that Mitzi was actually leaving the two bottom cards untouched as he shuffled. When Mitzi deals the cards, he tosses the bottom card onto his deck. Raisner, upon noticing this, insists upon getting the deck which Mitzi dealt himself. The latter promptly blew up and said that it's his hand, his deal. Of course, Raisner took Mitzi's deck and turned up the last card to reveal the Joker. Raisner was at the losing end at that point, but he told Mitzi that he would not pay on account of Mitzi being a cheating scumbag. Raisner said that Mitzi had been literally crying to him to keep this quiet via text messages and phone calls and that Mitzi even offered him a piece of his tournament action to keep this under wraps. Mitzi responded on 2 plus 2 forum with a post of his own, essentially denying any acquisitions of cheating, calling them absurd and far-fetched. In the 2015 W Coop, Sorrel Mitzi made the final table while sitting in his apartment in the United States. The problem was that PokerStars did not allow US players to play on PokerStars.com at that point. Perhaps the most shocking part of the story is that one of his best friends, Rory Brown, also final tabled the event and Sorrel Mitzi spoke with him about strategy in the final table and also offered to help him out before the final table started. Rory Brown at that time did not know that Mitzi was also playing in the tournament from another account. Mitzi admitted to the rule violations while on Joey Ingram's podcast and said that he really wanted to play the WCOOP main event so he used someone else's account using a VPN. Number 8. 
In 2009, two French players, Jean-Paul Pascalini and Cédric Rossi, competed in the Partouche Poker Tour and won first and second place. However, an inquiry took place after it was alleged that they had cheated using subtle hand signals to communicate what cards each held. This gave them an edge over the other players and allowed them to win millions of dollars each. They used their own nonverbal communication tools while playing poker in various casinos. That's how players share information about cards. They use various gestures, mimics and sounds to designate each card. However, the perfect plan to cheat at the Partouche Poker Tour was ruined by CCTV cameras. As a result, Jean-Paul Pascalini and Cedric Rossi were removed from the Global Poker Index rankings. Also, the duo received a life ban from participating in poker events. Number 9. In 2011, the online poker world broke out during the EM Championship in Austria when an Austrian and Swiss player reported that a German player who resides in London had installed a Trojan virus on their laptops, making their whole cards visible when playing against them online. The two players confronted the scammer in a hotel room during the poker event, who then confessed to the fraud. Later, however, the player referred to as Maximilian A in the official reports denied any involvement in the scam to the police. According to information of 2 plus 2, Maximilian A is actually Max Ashkar, a regular player at the high stakes tables under the screen name Max86. Ashkar had won 400,000 euros from the aforementioned players following the alleged installation of the Trojan, although the assumed number of his victims is much higher, around a dozen. His total winnings acquired by fraud can be over 2 million dollars. Max Ashkar is likely to have used a simple USB drive to install the virus in a couple of seconds on the laptops of high stakes players who had let him use their machines during live events or parties. This video is powered by Bluff the Spot, the best place to learn how to win at poker from actual high stake coaches like MMA Sherdog. Check the link in the description.